All right, fourth grade, let's do lessons 12.8 and 12.9. They both have to do with units of time, another type of measurement, and elapsed time word problems. So let's talk about units of time first. This is what we need to write down, right? This nice little key right here that tells us all the units of time we'll be using. So one minute is 60 seconds. You probably know a lot of these. This might be a little bit of a review. An hour is 60 minutes, a day is 24 hours, a week is 7 days, a year is 12 months, and a year is also equivalent to 52 weeks. Okay? So, using this nice little chart here, let's do some practice problems. So, number one says 2 hours is equivalent to how many minutes? Well, I know in 1 hour, there are 60 minutes. So, in 2 hours... I can do 2 times 60, forget about that 0, 2 times 6 is 12, how many zeros were there? 1, 120 minutes. Let's look at number 2, 4 years is equivalent to how many months? Well, I see that 1 year is equivalent to 12 months, so we're talking 4 times that amount, 4 times 12 months in a year because we want four years worth. Four times 12, 12, 24, 36, 48. 48 months. Let's look at the next one. Six days is equivalent to how many hours? Well, days and hours. Let's see. Oh, one day is equivalent to 24 hours. So one day equals 24 hours. How many would six days represent? Well, six times 24, hmm, let's write that vertically so we can do some multiplication here. 24 in one day, but we want 6 days worth, that's why we're multiplying it by 6. 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14, so that would be 144 hours. Last one. 10 weeks is equivalent to how many days? Well, let's see. In one week, there's seven days. But they're asking us... Oh, man, that's kind of thick. Let me make it a little thinner. There we go. This is the one we're using, right? One week is seven days, but they want to know how many days are in 10 weeks. So we need to do 10 times there's seven days in a week gives us 70 days. Right? You're just multiplying to see how much you get of the smaller unit. Using this chart will make it easier, right? We pretty much need to memorize these if we don't already know them. Okay. Let's look at a couple of lapse time problems. Dora and her brother Kyle spent one hour and 35 minutes doing yard work. Then they stopped for lunch at 1.20 p.m. At what time did they start doing yard work? Dora and her brother. Well, that's pretty nice. They're doing some yard work. Maybe they were doing it on a weekend. And then, okay, they did it before lunch. They spent an hour and 35 minutes doing all that yard work. I wonder what they were doing. Maybe mowing the lawn. Okay. Stopped for lunch at 1.20 what time did they start, oh man, doing the yard work? Okay, now for these types of elapsed time problems, I like to make a timeline for myself so I can show my work. So the first thing I do is make a nice long line, two ends, right? Here, I put the end time all the way to the right. And since they're asking for what time did they start, we need to go back an hour and 35 minutes to figure out when that was. So... When I see an hour and 35 minutes, I think, well, let's hop back an hour first. Hopping back an hour, an hour before 120 would be 1220. Okay, so now we've gone back an hour. Now let's go back those 35 minutes. Well, I see that we're at 1220, so let's take away 20 minutes first. If we take away 20 minutes, 
That puts us at 12 o'clock. But it said take away 35 minutes, so 20 minutes. So I need another 15 taken off. Right? That would be 15 minutes before 12 o'clock would be 11.45. There we go. So let's double check and make sure that I went back an hour and 35 minutes. So this was one hour. This was 20 minutes. And this was another 15 minutes. So 15 minutes plus 20 minutes, that's 35 minutes. Plus one hour, yes, that was one hour and 35 minutes, which is what the problem asked us to go back. That's how you can check your work too. So what time did they start doing yard work? They started at 11 45 a.m. Nice. Good job, Dora and her brother Kyle. Okay, so remember, using the timeline and hopping backward or hopping forwards, if the problem's asking you, really helps visualize the time and helps you keep it straight. I like to go back an hour and then make it an even o'clock and then keep going back however much I need after that. So let's try another one. Dora again. Oh my goodness. Okay. What if Dora and Kyle spent 50 minutes doing yard work and they stopped for lunch at 12.30 p.m.? Whoa, slackers. What are they doing? What time would they have started doing yard work? Okay. So this question, they changed it up on us. 50 minutes doing yard work and they stopped at 12.30 p.m. But it's still asking that same, what time did they start? So it should be an earlier time. So again, I made my timeline. I put that end time, they said, they ended at 12.30 for lunch, right? They wanna know what time they started if they worked for 50 minutes. Again, I like to hop back to an even o'clock. So if it's 12.30, the, next, the before even o'clock would be 30 minutes. And that would take us back to 12 o'clock. Now, they said 50 minutes, so I need to take another 20 minutes off to make 50 minutes. Whoa. Okay. So 20 minutes before 12, that would be 1140. Right? Because an hour only has 60 minutes. So that's why you're hopping back. So let's double check. 20 minutes plus 30 minutes. 20 plus 30 is 50 minutes. And that's what the question asked us to find. Awesome. So what time do they start now if they spent 50 minutes and ended at 1230? Yeah, 1230. Well, then they would have started at 1140 a.m. All right. Make sure that you're using your timeline and you're hopping back and thinking, right? Or your next practice problems, they might say jump ahead in time. They might say a movie starts at 2 o'clock. It's two hours long. What time would you leave the movie? Then you'd have to jump forward two hours. Let's take a look at our practice problems. So there's two practice problems. Beth got on the bus at 8.06 a.m., 35 minutes Later, she arrived at school. What time did Beth arrive at school? So again, this one, you're jumping ahead in time, right? Later is our keyword. The second practice problem, Lyle went fishing for one hour and 30 minutes until he ran out of bait at 6.40 p.m. At what time did Lyle start fishing? Again, these keywords tell you, are you going back in time or forward, right? This one, he ends at 6.40. They want to know what time he started. So we're going to have to be jumping back in time for that one. Okay. Um, make sure you draw your timelines so you can show your work and check your work in class. Have a good night.